It is with immense pride that I welcome you to St George's Park, England's new national football centre. Today we are here to, both to celebrate a wonderful achievement and to look forward to an exciting future. Your Royal Highness, as our President, I am particularly delighted that you and the Duchess are able to be here today to officially open St George's Park. Coming here this morning and seeing these wonderful facilities and beautiful surroundings and experiencing this extraordinary place gave me the same feelings I had when I first went to the Olympic Park. A mixture of pride that we are capable in this country of creating something so beyond compare anywhere else and excitement at what this means, not just for our national game, but for sport and opportunity in this country as a whole. I think the centre marks a hugely significant moment for football development in this country. It's a tremendous credit to both David Bernstein, David Sheepshanks, but also his team and indeed the, the FA for having the vision, the leadership and the determination to deliver what we can all see here today. We hope that you will agree that what we have developed is truly world class and it incorporates a national football centre of which the nation can be proud and which English football can utilise to its advantage. Ladies and gentlemen, what has been achieved here in 330 acres of East Staffordshire National Forest is nothing short of breathtaking. A project that may have been long and difficult in gestation has over the last two years come to life in spectacular fashion. An inspiring training base for all our international teams. A world leading coach facility, true to Howard Wilkinson's original aspiration for an Oxbridge of football. A sports science and medicine facility that is set to lead the way in rehabilitation and research. And an integrated complex of hotels, education, leisure and corporate facilities that is already becoming a home for all English football. It will provide employment and a social hub for local people and through the thousands of volunteers on which coaching relies, it will foster community spirit, purpose and hope throughout England. The superb medical and rehabilitation facilities that St George's Park possesses offer us the clearest example of how this incredible place will help those way beyond the frontiers of football. Ex-servicemen and women, some of whom will have been wounded in the service of our country, will find respite and care here. And for that, we must all be grateful to the innovative minds that created St George's Park. What you see now is just the beginning. I cannot emphasize strongly enough that St George's Park is an investment for the long term, the full benefits of which should not be expected to be realized for a decade or more. Six million pounds of public funding is evidence that the government shares the FA's vision for what St George's Park can achieve for everyone, not just the elite. And through Sports England's three million pounds, we will also be providing greater opportunities for communities and for schools to make maximum use of this superb multi-sports facility. Three million pounds has also come from my own department, the DCMS, to help ensure an increase in the number of coaches coming into the game, and specifically to support black and ethnic minority groups. Linking with universities, Birmingham and Liverpool and Burton and South Derbyshire College, business schools, it's a place to develop leadership qualities and teamwork, to grow a culture of winning for the long term, an ethos of continuous learning and personal development, and the never-ending pursuit of personal bests. Just as France, Spain and Germany have done before us, we're investing in growing the number but the quality of coaches. 2013 will be a great year for the Football Association. It'll be 150 years old and England will be hosting the Champions League final and the UEFA Congress. There could be no more fitting way of marking these important events and a century and a half of England's unique contribution to the world game than the existence of St George's Park.
While St George's Park is predominantly focused on football, we welcome other sports here for training camps and to share experiences and meet each other. And we're delighted that the RFU have already enjoyed a training camp here and other sports are set to follow. Enjoy today and please go back to your clubs, your counties, your different sports, your home nations and tell everyone that in a beautiful and quiet corner of rural Staffordshire, there was an iconic world-class sporting facility. Open to all, staffed by brilliant and enthusiastic people and ready to inspire, to teach, to share and to lead. We have a world-class stage in Wembley Stadium and now a world-class training centre at St George's Park. Given time, we hope it will be a world-class combination for a winning England. I feel tempted to cry, God for Harry, England and St George. But I really don't want to lower the tone by bringing my brother into it. <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much indeed.